could listen to that now for hours. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. Welcome back. You might not recognise the language, but you definitely recognise the song. That's Paul Byram with All By Myself. Yes, this year, the Dublin-born tenor Paul Byram is taking to the stage for Paul Byram Live in the Helix Theatre. And he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Good morning to you guys. Thank How you are for is? joining us. Thanks that for having me. absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much, yeah. It, uh, that was filmed a couple of years ago now in, uh, in the States for American Public Television. It was very a two-hour special kind of thing, you know, so... Uh, it was great. Picked one of the cheesiest songs ever written. Yes, and of course you did. I thought, yeah, yeah. how do I make it even more cheesy? Turned it into <laughs> Spanish. You know? So it's great. And then every now and again when I'm singing it live, I forget the words and I just kind of make them up. You and make people them think, up. oh, so romantic. <laughs> yeah, so um, will, will we be hearing that in the Helix? In the I think that'll probably make a feature all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, I'm what actually, can audiences expect in October? Because uh, we're talking about it, you have a big gig coming up in the Helix. Yeah, Paul it's Byron the first time I've done the Helix, actually, yeah. as a solo artist. You know, I've always kind of done the concert at all and yes. um, so yeah. this is kind of the first time I've done the Helix and I'm, I'm very excited about it um, and, and for a long time I've kind of tried to have a theme to my concerts and so for the first time in a long time I'm doing a concert that's just music I like yeah. right so it's going to be an awful lot of uh, stuff from the West End and Broadway yeah. um, and a couple of mainstream pieces um, and like, for example, Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. Very good. Um, and stuff you like singing. Stuff that I like singing. Yeah. Obviously, with a, well, there's no avoiding that I'm a tenor. So yeah, it's, yeah. I suppose it's, it's stuff that you'll all know, but just with my kind of voice to and it. So. Are there, you, you have obviously a band on stage now, but are you going to have duets? Are you going to have people guesting? Yeah, I'm going to have you? a couple of guests on. I have a, a great theatre, a youth co a group coming out uh, from out uh, Stilorgan direction there. An interesting group of students that did a school musicals together in school and since they finished they wanted to keep it up so they formed a little society together oh, very and good. they've got a couple of teachers helping them out they're going to be joining me on stage for a couple of numbers as well Excellent. so that's exciting um, and I'm still working on adding guests to that like I think it's nice to just break it up uh, looking at this face for two hours can get a bit weary you know, so. <laughs> uh, so yeah so no I, it will be uh, very much the, the intention is for it to be an, an evening of uh, music that everybody will know of all yeah. ages um, and, and a light hearted evening a few stories in between and yeah, uh, you've a very you know, loyal following, but I suppose putting your own choice of music and mm -hmm. your own kind of uh, maybe more modern influences might introduce a new audience to the show, do you think? Yeah, and I, I also think I, I'm very fortunate in that I'm living at a time when uh, the classical voice, that's got the tenor voice, so to speak, um, is quite popular now, even yeah. with the younger, you know, for yeah. years the tenor thing was very much for the uh, for the old ones, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, um, the John McCormick kind of brigade. But like now, as 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 time has gone by, and I mean, Bocelli is probably as popular with thirty year olds Absolutely. as he is with seventy year olds. Josh Groban, Josh yeah. Groban of he's course, I mean, he's accessible. huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Riddled with jealousy well, when you over have that fellow. Hosting <laughs> the likes of Saturday Night Live. Well, the, it you does know help. That it's, it's a, there's a yeah. crossover there. Yeah, isn't no, there? absolutely, and and you know he's he's. Um, you know, all those guys are helping the likes of myself, you know, and so uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's something that I've found my, the age demographic of my audience has dropped mm. a lot. Um, or maybe it's just I'm getting older, I don't know, but no, one of the other sure yeah, yeah. maybe. You're no stranger to the Helix, yeah. um, because you were there last year, and with Seven Anna were just, and I was in fact complimenting you last year, because you appeared, you made your panto debut. I did, In the yeah. wonderful Helix panto, and there you are, as Gaston. Yeah. And Anna was here. saying that you went with Anna and, well, I was just saying that <coughs> Panto, you, you watch Panto as an adult through your children. That's the pure yeah. magic of it, isn't it? That you watch yeah. their reactions. And they were, and they were, they've, they've been to quite a few Pantos, mm. but they were absolutely mesmerised by Gaston. And you know, <laughs> when you're driving home and they're talking oh, about their the favourite yeah, characters yeah, yeah. and they're yeah. repeating the lines, and it was all Gaston. Uh, well, was, they adored look, was, you. And was, I think that's the ultimate test, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, look, it was the first time I've ever done Panto. I, I thought, you, if you'd asked me 10 years ago what I do Panto, I probably would have laughed. She was like, no way, yeah. you know, because I thought I was somebody, yeah. you know. But I as, yeah. as you get older, you realise you're nobody you know, and you're just, just delighted yeah. to be working. So when the offer came in to do Panto, it was one of those things I always wanted to do, and especially now that a lot of my friends have kids now. Yeah. And um, so it was great to be able to do something that they were able to come with their kids to see me, you know. Um, I thoroughly enjoy. I couldn't, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed it. It's a serious um, test of stamina doing a Panto run, and the Helix is well, a long enough run. Yeah, yeah but it is, it <clears> is. <throat> but, like, here's the thing. I, uh, I find if you're working with a good company, and I'm sure you know only too well, Simon. Mm. Um, like, if you're working with a good company and surrounded by a good cast, it's, it's grand. Yeah, it you is. Know? Yeah, it's yeah. like any and job. I, it's I was all blessed about the people that. that you're surrounded yeah, by yeah, on a absolutely. daily or nightly basis. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and Theatre Works, they're, they're brilliant. They're a brilliant company to work for. Uh, Claire uh, Ty is the writer and, and producer, and 
Uh, then Carl Harper is, is the director. Um, and, and they're just, you know, from, from the get-go, they made me feel comfortable. And uh, they put me then into very tight trousers, which I wasn't <laughs> overly delighted about. <laughs> and then when they came up to me, I, I don't know whether it's too early in the morning, but <coughs> when the costume lady came up to me and says, Paul, um, very awkwardly, you know, she says, um, you, you don't have... Um, um, a jock strap too, oh and I was like, God. "What's a jock strap? I've never heard yeah, of a jock strap in my life." So, needless to say, that was a, a, a baptism uh, of fire for me as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it has been great, and, and needless to say, I'm looking forward to doing this year's panto. You're going back again. I'm going, going back. back. Right. I just so thought, you frightened off by it. No, I good, love. I genuinely good. loved it, and I've been, to, as I said, I've <clears> toured <throat> and I've done all these different productions over the years, and it was just so much fun. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm excited to say as well that my. Little right hand man Bradley is going to be joining me. Your in dog this year's features in heavily your dog, in your life, doesn't he? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. They rang up and they said, "Well, uh, Carl sent me a text and he goes, so tell me, Paul, why, how's Bradley's acting?" And I said, um, "Ah, look, probably, probably, probably better than mine." <laughs> and uh, so, so they were like, "Great, would he be on for coming into the show?" And I was like, "Brilliant." So, so you get um, to work with your pal. Well, it means I don't have to worry about getting daycare from every day for yeah, three months. Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. Yes. And what's so, the show? What is the panto this the year? The panto this year is Robin Hood. And oh, you're playing? Brilliant. And I'm playing um, Maid Mary. No, I'm playing um, <laughs> the Sheriff of Nottingham. I'd so visions of the you eyebrows are back. You the know. eyebrows I'd are visions back. of you playing Robin Hood back into those tights again. Well, look, rule nothing else, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> but you'll bring your own jock strap this yeah, year. Yeah, I'll bring my own this you'll year. You'll be well prepared. Yeah, yeah. We had Donald Skeen in yesterday, and we were talking about all the time he spends in the States. You yeah. spend an awful lot of time in the States as I well, do, don't you? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I spend probably... I'd say at this stage now, probably about four months of the year out there, you know. Okay. Um, it depends, you know, on, on, on the mood, so to speak, and, or the vibe. And I, I'm always aware then not to, you know, go to the well too often. You know, yeah. like, I think if you like touring too much, the novelty wears off pretty quickly. So, um, and, and there's a lot of Irish acts out there, which is a testament to the country, you know, that yeah. we've got so many great artists over there touring. But you need to kind of just dip in and dip out. But I, I'm very fortunate to have a following out there. And, and you talk about a loyal following. I mean, they, yeah. they really are but as loyal sung, as they you've get. You've sung over there at some ridiculous venues in terms yeah. of, yeah. like, you know, singing the anthems at the sports games. States, Tell yeah. us about some of the places that you're singing. Well, about, I mean, you meant the, the sports games are great. I do the Boston Celtics regularly, you know. Oh, and the crowd in Boston. Boss. They're, they're lunatics in Boston, firstly. Like, yeah. when it comes to sports, they take it to another oh, level. God, like, nowhere yeah. else in and the States. And how many people are there on average? There's only about 20,000 in, okay. the, in the TD Garden. But... Um, they're up for it, you know. They're yeah. fired up from the time oh, they get yeah. in there. So when you kind of hit the rockets' red glare, they're yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah. So it's great, um, great buzz on that. But like Radio City, I've done Radio City three times, um, wow. and, cool, and, and that was pretty cool. But then recently in March, I got a booking to do Las Vegas, and I've only ever been in Las Vegas drunk. So I was very excited to kind of get there. <laughs> like uh, most not people, the name of the club. <laughs> I was very excited to get there sober, and um, and and so I kind of landed, and I just assumed that nobody was going to. Like, you go to Vegas, you're thinking yeah, yeah. Elton John, Celine yeah, Dion. Yeah. You're not thinking Irish tenor, Paul Byron, right? Yeah. So um, I was expecting nobody would ever just go down, enjoy the moment, and go hit the, the strip afterwards, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I landed and I got picked up by the airport and I was talking to the girl and making small talk. That, and I was like, so have we anybody in tonight, you know? She goes, what? I said, like, what's the crowd like, you know? Just, yeah. you know, you may as well tell me now. She goes, oh, we're sold out. I was like, what? Couldn't believe it. Finished the tour in Vegas. I had a couple of hundred, like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge, it was a small kind of um, lounge vibe, you know, that kind Excellent. of thing going on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, the stage overlooked the strip. Oh, you yeah, know? man. So, like, it was like a, you'd arrive, a baby. real throwback to kind of that Dean Martin kind of vibe, yeah. you know? Well, listen, um, tell us again about the gig, Paul. It's uh... October 6th in the Helix. Um, uh, and I'm also actually in, in Sligo, the 22nd of September. Very for good. anybody out the west coast of Ireland that thinks we don't leave Dublin, I'm coming out to Sligo the 22nd to the Coleman uh, Arts Centre uh, on the 22nd. Good. But uh, the Helix is the 6th of October, and I promise you it'll be a lovely evening because uh, I have guests, so I'm not just leaving it on my shoulders. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> so, enjoy the show, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Right, after the break, more autumnal prints over on the catwalk. Stay with us.